Hi, I'm Jan Coates. I'm here in my writing room with my best friend, Charlie. And uh, we live in Wolfville, Nova Scotia. I'm a children's writer, and I'm going to share a little bit of my middle grade novel, The Power of Harmony, with you. My own kids, who used to look like this. Can you see them there? Yeah. Oh, where'd they go? <laughs> there they are are all grown up now. So Charlie's the only one that I have left <laughs> to read aloud to, and she's a very good listener. <laughs> this is The Power of Harmony, and Charlie's gonna try to eat it. So it's written for uh, middle grade readers, uh, approximately between the ages of eight and 12. Um, it's sort of the book that I've been writing my whole life in that it um, is inspired, I guess, by things that happened to me when I was a kid in the 1960s, and in particular surrounding uh, bullying on my playground, the playground at my elementary school in Truro, Nova Scotia. And I'm just going to read a little segment here. The main character is Jen, and uh, this is sort of about a third of the way into the book, and just to give you a flavor of the story. Except for the birds, it's quiet when I get there. I lean my bike up against a tree trunk, then put my net over one shoulder and stroll around the pond, listen to the swamp music, the bees buzzing, the crickets and the grasshoppers chirping, a big old turtle sunning himself on a stone along one edge. I duck when two dragonflies zoom past my head. <laughs> Devil's darn <laughs> Sorry, I just can't move Charlie out of the way here. Okay, Charlie. Okay, okay, there we go. <laughs> a big old turtle sunning himself on a stone along one edge. I duck when two dragonflies zoom past my head. Devil's darning needles, Nanny calls them. Is September too cold for butterflies? Maybe they're already hibernating like bears, waiting for spring. I look up when I hear somebody shouting. Junior and Wade are running around over by where the number two and number four mines used to be. The old mine pitheads get all sealed up after the big bump, flooded, then filled with cement so nobody falls in. The bad boys are having a sword fight, and Junior's got a black patch over one eye. Maybe Wade binged him with a rock. Through the big windows in the old brick lantern building where the miners used to pick up their headlamps, I see somebody else, skipping. Even from way over here, I can hear her singing, a song we did in choir last year. And it's Land of the Silver Birch, if you know that, Land of the Silver Birch, so I won't sing that for you. Wade and Junior spot Melody when she gets to the corner. Engine! Wade shouts. Let's get her! Melody takes off running. Car tires squeal when she dashes across the road, her long hair flying out behind her like a cape. Hey, watch where you're going! The driver shouts out the window. You trying to get yourself killed? Melody doesn't... <laughs> Charlie's not helping me any. <laughs> Melody doesn't slow down, disappears into the woods out back of the pond. The bad boys try to hide their swords behind their backs and smile at the man in the car. Junior's even whistling. I walk fast around the edge of the pond, look back over my shoulder till I can't see the bad boys anymore. I look out underneath the brim of my hat, up at the trees and the wispy white clouds, puffing like train smoke across the blue sky. Jack Frost's already been to visit. Most of the flowers are crunchy and brown, and the tall brown cattails are leaking fur all over the place. Sometime over the summer, a giant pointy pine tree must have got hit by lightning. It's burnt black where it's snapped in two, and the long part's stretched out over the pond like a bridge. I sit on the splintery end of it, make sure the bad boys can't see me, then stare out over the top of the pond. There's no breeze, so most of it's like a mirror, only with little puckers every time a dragonfly darts down to snatch a bug up out of the water. It's so quiet and still. It's spooky. When the bushes start rustling behind me, I jerk my head around. There isn't any wind. Is somebody watching me? I look back over the pond and start singing softly, Land of the Silver Birch. Something catches my eye way down at the floating tip top of the burnt tree. Something big and pale green, clinging to a prickly branch, gently fluttering its wings open and closed, open and closed like it's dancing. Is it a Luna moth? I've never seen a real one before, only in books. But shouldn't it be sleeping in the daytime? I stand up, put one foot on the tree, then the other, and inch sideways along the thick trunk to get a closer look. I reach my net out in front of me, but the big moth, still too far away, looks almost as big as my hand. 
I shuffle sideways along the tree a little further, bend my knees and hold my arms out to keep my balance. That's your grandmother's Easter bonnet? I glance back over my shoulder. Junior and Wade are standing at the other end of the tree bridge, Wade's whacking the fuzzy tops off the cattails with his wooden sword. I turn to face the Luna Moth again, put my hands down by my sides so I don't look scared, my eyes twitching. Hey, I know, Wade says. Let's make her walk the plank. Ahoy, matey, jolly good idea, Junior says. I look down at the water, at the yellow and brown leaves stuck to it, and my eyes slam shut. With my good eye... I watched the Luna Moth flutter up into the sky, then disappear above the treetops. I hunger down when the tree starts jiggling. They're jumping up and down on it, waving their swords around, stabbing them in the air as they walk toward me. Get moving, Junior shouts. Walk the plank, you one-eyed devil. The murky brown water splashes up around where the tree's hitting it. Dad says the pond's bottomless because there's miles of mine tunnels underneath, a perfect hiding place for the breath grabber. Arr, maybe she's got some booty for us, Wade says. What's that you got, girl? All of a sudden, the ground starts grumbling and shaking. The top of the pond gets all ripply, like somebody threw a bunch of stones into it. I grab onto one of the needly pine branches to keep from falling in. When the bump's over, Junior laughs his burr prickle head off. What's wrong, Blinky? Not scared of getting wet, are you? Wade's close enough now to poke me in the bum with his sword. Not scared of a little water, are you, girl? Poke, poke, poke. I inch further away from them, closer to the skinny end of the tree. Cold water seeps into my sneakers. I freeze when a warbly bird call wobbles around us, like the loons on Sandy Bottom Lake. Move it! Junior bounces harder, like he's on Mr. McLeod's trampoline. The wet bark's slippery. I drop my net and grab onto a branch, but it snaps off in my hands. I wave my arms around in the air, try to catch my balance. Wade gives me one good jab with his sword, and I fall backwards, smack into the pond's icy water. I splash around, frantically grabbing at the branches, the lily pads, anything. Help! I scream. I can't swim! But the bad boys are gone. So that's a little taste of uh, the power of harmony. There it is. Oh, it's looking kind of shiny. <laughs> and Charlie is still listening, as you can see. See, she's a very good listener. <laughs> but thank you for listening. Jan Coates in Wolfville. Happy uh, read aloud day.